Hello friends. Before we begin, I wanted to ask you to subscribe to the channel. Most of you listen to scary stories without subscribing. I would be pleased if you would subscribe, as it's free. And now let's begin. This incident occurred during my high school years when I was a sophomore. I should note that I have an elder sibling, but he was already in college when this event took place. Every day, I would take the bus back home from school, which would drop me off at the end of my street. From there, I would walk the remaining distance to my house, usually arriving by around 2.45 p.m. Our house was situated about halfway down the street. One typical day, I got off the bus, strolled towards my home, entered through the main entrance, and went inside. My parents were still at work, as they seldom were home when I returned from school. Occasionally, they would finish work early on Fridays, but this was a Thursday. I would usually be alone at home for about one to three hours, which I didn't mind as it allowed me to do whatever I pleased. Upon entering the house that day, I had some homework to complete, so I decided to finish it as soon as possible. I headed upstairs to my bedroom, as our house was a two-story building, and my room was on the upper floor. About 30 minutes after I got home, while I was engrossed in my homework, I heard a knock on the front door. I was unsure who it could be since we rarely had visitors at our door. I rose from my desk and descended the stairs to inspect the front door. By the time I reached the door, I half expected the person who had knocked to have left since they hadn't knocked again. However, when I got to the door, I saw a man standing there. He appeared quite ordinary, dressed in what seemed to be some sort of professional attire and holding a briefcase. I unlocked the front door and opened it. The man greeted me, and I inquired about his purpose for visiting. That's when he informed me that he worked in the insurance industry. I can't recall the exact details of what he said, as he spoke rather quickly, and the only word that stuck with me was, insurance. He questioned whether I was the homeowner, to which I replied no, and informed him that my parents were currently not home. The man apologized for the disturbance, and bid me farewell. I observed him as he retreated down the driveway, after which I returned upstairs to my room. After returning to my room, I resumed my homework. My bedroom had a window that provided a view of the backyard. Roughly ten minutes later, something outside the window caught my attention. I approached the window and noticed that the insurance man was now in our backyard, which immediately made me uneasy, as there was no justifiable reason for him to be there. I observed him walking towards one of our rear windows and saw him glance around, as if checking to ensure no one was watching. As soon as he did this, I quickly ducked below my window. After waiting a few moments, I cautiously peeked up again, and the man was still there by the window. He placed his briefcase on the ground and opened it, revealing what appeared to be an assortment of tools. He peered into the window, cupping his hands around his face to block the light. Then he returned to his briefcase, picked up an item from it, and approached another window to inspect the interior. Afterward, he went back to the initial window he had been at. I observed him take out a tool, and I was convinced that he was planning to break in. As the man began to use his tool on the window, I devised a plan. Since my parents were not home yet and their arrival time was uncertain, I stealthily dashed out of my room and descended the stairs. I reached the garage door that connected our pantry to the garage, opened it, and pressed the button to raise the front garage door. Once I had done this, I cautiously moved to the dining room doorway and peeked towards the window where the man was located. Just in time, I saw him hastily retreat. I watched as he sprinted to the other side of our house, and then I returned to the garage to close the open garage door. My intention was to make the man believe that my parents had arrived by opening the garage door, and fortunately the strategy worked. The man dashed into our neighbor's backyard, and after that, I lost sight of him. However, I believe he continued to flee. I remained vigilant, keeping an eye on the backyard, but the man never reappeared. When my parents finally returned, I recounted the entire ordeal to them. They were impressed with how I had managed the situation. Thankfully, the man never showed up again, and I'm relieved that he was unable to gain entry into our home. Roughly a year ago, I resided in an apartment by myself. Since then, I've moved to a different place, as the one I lived in previously wasn't the finest. 
It was a compact, single-bedroom apartment on the second floor, featuring a tiny balcony that I appreciated. One evening, I found myself home alone, preparing dinner. I frequently cooked at home, and that day, I was standing at the stove in the kitchen. It was early spring, and the weather was still somewhat chilly. As I cooked, I began to feel quite warm, which wasn't unusual for me. I decided to walk over to the sliding door that led to my balcony, located at the far end of my apartment. Upon opening it, I was greeted by a refreshing gust of cool air. Afterward, I returned to my cooking duties. Approximately 20 minutes later, I was still engrossed in my culinary endeavors when I heard an unexpected sound. I glanced over to see a stranger standing in the entrance of my sliding glass door. I had no idea who this man was. Initially, I was too baffled and startled to react. The mysterious man simply stood there for a moment before proceeding to walk into my apartment and enter my bedroom, closing the door behind him. Finally finding my voice, I shouted, Who are you? I repeated the question, this time more loudly. The intruder in my bedroom did not respond, but I could hear sounds coming from within. At that moment, I was still standing close to the kitchen, which was adjacent to the front door. As my bedroom door began to open, I seized the opportunity to open my front door and make my escape. I sprinted down the hallway and dashed towards the staircase. I knew I needed to contact the authorities, but as I reached the staircase, I suddenly realized that I had left my cell phone behind on the kitchen counter. Unwilling to return to my apartment, I decided to continue descending the stairs. Once outside, I made my way to my car parked in the lot. Seated in my vehicle, I pondered my next course of action. I thought about driving to a friend's place or the police station, but I wasn't sure of the station's location, and I didn't want to show up at a friend's home unannounced. Moreover, I didn't have my phone to facilitate either of these plans. After spending roughly an hour in my car, I resolved to return to my apartment. I assumed that by this time, the intruder would have left. So I exited my car and ventured back inside the building. Upon entering my apartment, I was met with a disarrayed scene, my belongings scattered across the floor and furniture displaced. Despite the chaos, I neither saw nor heard anyone. I noticed that the balcony door was now closed. Cautiously, I continued to explore my apartment, but as soon as I reached my bedroom doorway, I caught sight of the stranger once more. Panicking, I dashed out of my apartment, and this time, I knocked on my next-door neighbor's door. I had never met my neighbors, but my desperation outweighed any social concerns. They opened the door, and I quickly informed them that someone had broken into my apartment and asked them to call the police. My neighbors kindly allowed me to enter their home, and together we awaited the arrival of law enforcement. When the police finally arrived, they found the intruder still inside my apartment. He had taken my phone and filled a backpack with numerous items he intended to steal. I couldn't fathom why he had remained in my apartment for such an extended period. As it turned out, he had gained entry by climbing up to my balcony and entering through the open door. It seemed that he must have noticed my open door from a distance. Ultimately, I was just relieved that he had been apprehended. This story takes place during my high school years. It was summertime, and my parents had planned a weekend getaway with some of their friends. This meant that I would be spending the weekend home alone. I didn't have any specific plans, so I just intended to play video games and relax. Our house was comfortable, but nothing extraordinary. When my parents left, I thought it was pretty cool to be the only one in the house, as it didn't happen often. I was enjoying my time alone until the second night rolled around. It was a Friday and I stayed up quite late. I had been playing on my PlayStation and finally began feeling tired around 2 a.m. I switched off all the lights and climbed into bed. Just as I was beginning to relax and drift off to sleep, I heard a noise. It sounded like a faint knocking at my bedroom window. Although it was soft, I was sure I had heard it. I sat up in bed and scanned the room. Everything was quiet now. I didn't hear anything, and when I peered out my window, I didn't see anything either. I assumed I was just being overly cautious. I stayed awake for a few more minutes, listening and looking around. After hearing nothing, I finally convinced myself that I was just being anxious for no reason. I laid back down and closed my eyes. Within approximately five minutes, 
I felt relaxed again, but then the knocking returned. This time it was louder, and there was no denying it. I sat up quickly and looked towards the window. That's when I thought I saw something move out of my line of sight. I couldn't really identify what it was, as I only caught a glimpse of it for a brief moment. My window was adjacent to a tree, so I tried to reassure myself that it was just a branch or something similar. Nevertheless, it didn't quite feel like that to me. This time, I decided to get up and switch on my bedroom light. I then proceeded to the living room, as it felt like a safer space to me. I peered out the window. I didn't see anyone, but I did notice an unfamiliar car parked somewhat near our house on the street. I became increasingly suspicious. I continued to watch the car, trying to determine if someone was inside. However, I soon heard a noise coming from the rear of the house. This time, it wasn't a knock, but rather the sound of someone attempting to open the back door. Upon hearing this, I rushed back into my bedroom, dove into my bed, and covered myself with my blankets. I then called the police and recounted everything that had transpired. I had no intention of emerging from my makeshift hiding place until the police arrived. I was terrified and tried my best to stay hidden and distract myself until help arrived. During the entire ordeal, I didn't hear any loud noises or commotion. When the police finally arrived, I emerged from my hiding spot. However, what they told me sent shivers down my spine. They explained that upon arriving at my house, they saw a man fleeing from the backyard. When they went around to investigate, they discovered the back door wide open. This meant that the intruder had managed to enter the house without my knowledge. The man had run off when the police arrived, but his car remained parked on the street. Fortunately, he was apprehended within an hour, and I felt a great sense of relief after that.